Understanding Narcissism, Insights into Human Behavior and Motivations. I'll preface this with the fact that I'm admittedly a person who has an incessant need to understand human behavior, why people do what they do, their motivations and drives, and how things work in the real world. So, while I don't enjoy ruminating on this particular topic, and this is very likely the last post I'll make about this topic, I think it's important to try and use social media in a positive way to share knowledge and opinions based on data and foster healthy discussions. This post is also part of finally seeking closure within myself, as discussed further down. In a single case study, I've seen what appears to be a true narcissist, read and reread an email I sent to them explaining what they did, how they made me feel, and the harm they caused themselves and others by their actions and behaviors. A futile attempt, of course, but further study and research have given some insight into how these types of people work. I've learned a lot from this experience. While most of us do have some narcissistic tendencies, there's around 2% estimated of the population who are actual narcissists, classified as having NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. This is extremely damaging to themselves and others. Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, is a complex and deeply ingrained condition that affects an individual's ability to empathize with others and take responsibility for their actions. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, individuals with NPD tend to have a grandiose sense of self-importance, a lack of empathy, and a tendency to exploit others for their own gain. They also have a fragile sense of self-esteem that requires constant validation and admiration from others. Given these traits, it can be difficult to engage a narcissist in meaningful self-reflection or discussion about their behavior. In fact, attempts to confront a narcissist about their actions will often be met with defensiveness, denial, or even, in the worst cases, aggression. It is important to recognize that true narcissists are made and not born, through their negative experiences with society and exposure to actual narcissists. True narcissists, according to the studies we have, will almost never change, and it appears that those who do change end up telling their friends who they are, what they are struggling with, and seek support from them to check their behavior and watch out for possible reactions and behaviors that are based on their narcissism. They also get into intensive therapy and commit to a lifelong change in positive ways. Unfortunately, this is extremely rare, but it does happen. So when you send an email to someone, you can request read receipts. The problem with these is that the recipient has to allow read receipts to be sent back. There are other free services out there that will allow you to track when an email was opened and how long it was read. This is usually useful for market research purposes, but can also give some insight into human behavior. Anyone who's been broken up with or broke up with somebody who all evidence points to being a true narcissist might send an email to express what that person did to them, how it made them feel, and attempt to get across to them how their actions negatively impact themselves and others, and try to get them to see how their behavior will ensure they spend the last 20, 30 years of their lives truly alone, without committed relationships. It is worth noting that the sender may never get a response back, as narcissists will often give the silent treatment as a way to abuse and feel they are in control. We can offer some general insights into why someone might repeatedly read an email that is critical of them or that addresses a painful issue. While someone repeatedly reading an email doesn't mean they are a narcissist, here are some reasons why the person is doing this. Let's start with healthy, non-narcissistic reasons they may keep rereading your email, then delve into the unhealthy reasons so we can understand what is going on. In some cases, a person may repeatedly read an email that is critical of them because they are trying to understand the other person's perspective or to make sense of their own feelings. They may be searching for clues or insights that can help them improve their behavior or avoid similar situations in the future. This is not necessarily related to narcissism, but rather a normal human reaction to feedback or criticism. It is also possible that a narcissist might keep reading an email sent to them repeatedly for reasons other than their narcissism. It could be that the content of the email has touched on an emotional issue that they are struggling to come to terms with. Unhealthily, individuals with narcissism have difficulty accepting responsibility for their actions and are prone to denial or defensiveness. They may repeatedly read an email that is critical of them as a way of reinforcing their own perspective or dismissing the other person's feelings as invalid or exaggerated. 
This is related to the narcissistic trait of lacking empathy and prioritizing one's own feelings and beliefs over those of others. They may be seeking validation or trying to find any perceived weaknesses in your argument to exploit. Narcissists often have a strong need for control and power, so they may keep revisiting the email to ensure that they have control over the situation. It is important to remember that they never actually had any control you didn't freely give them out of a false sense of safety and trust. Additionally, narcissists often struggle with empathy, and so they likely may not fully comprehend the impact of their behavior on others. Therefore, they may read the email repeatedly in an attempt to understand your perspective and how their actions contributed to the situation. It is also possible that they may be trying to analyze the email to figure out how to respond in a way that maintains their self-image as superior or blameless. Or, on the darker side of things, they may be seeking validation by rereading the email and reliving the emotional impact it had on you. It's worth noting that these are generalizations, and every individual and situation is unique. It is also worth noting that if you are concerned about someone's behavior or motivations, it may be helpful to seek guidance from a mental health professional or another trusted resource. Remember that we cannot control another person's behavior. It can be challenging to communicate effectively with a narcissist, as they tend to be focused on their own needs and desires rather than those of others. While there is no studied and guaranteed way to get a narcissist to change, there are some strategies that may be helpful in managing interactions with them. 1. Use I statements. When talking to a narcissist, it's important to focus on your own feelings and experiences rather than blaming or accusing them. For example, instead of saying, you always make everything about you, you could say, I feel ignored and unimportant when you don't listen to my needs. 2. Stay calm. Narcissists can be quick to anger or become defensive when confronted with criticism, so it's important to stay calm and avoid getting into a shouting match or argument. 3. Provide concrete examples. It can be helpful to provide specific examples of how their behavior has hurt you or others. This can help them see the impact of their actions more clearly. 4. Offer positive reinforcement. Narcissists respond well to praise and positive reinforcement, so it can be helpful to offer encouragement when they do show empathy or consideration for others. 5. Set clear boundaries. If the narcissist continues to engage in harmful behavior, it may be necessary to set clear boundaries for yourself and consequences for their actions. 6. Avoid engaging in power struggles. It is important to avoid engaging in power struggles with a narcissist because it can lead to further manipulation, gaslighting, and emotional harm. Narcissists thrive on control and attention, and engaging in power struggles only feeds into their need for dominance and validation. Additionally, narcissists are often skilled at manipulating situations to make themselves look good and others look bad, which can lead to further harm to the person engaging in the power struggle. According to Dr. Ramani Durvasila, a licensed clinical psychologist and author of Don't You Know Who I Am? How to Stay Sane in an Era of Narcissism, Entitlement, and Incivility. A power struggle with a narcissist is a no-win situation because narcissists don't play fair. They change the rules move the goalposts, and are willing to do whatever it takes to win. A study published in the journal, Personality Disorders, Theory, Research, and Treatment found that individuals with Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, exhibited a heightened sensitivity to criticism and were more likely to engage in retaliatory behaviors when they felt threatened or criticized. This suggests that engaging in power struggles with a narcissist can lead to further emotional harm and retaliation. Overall, it is important to set boundaries for yourself, practice self-care, and seek professional help when dealing with a narcissist. Engaging in power struggles is unlikely to lead to a positive outcome and can instead lead to further emotional harm. 7. Seek support from a therapist, support group, or both. It is important to seek support from a therapist, support group, or both when dealing with a narcissist because it can help you establish boundaries for yourself, develop coping strategies, and work through the emotional trauma caused by the relationship. These resources can also provide validation and support, which can be essential for healing and moving forward. According to the American Psychological Association, APA, therapy can be an effective tool for individuals dealing with the effects of narcissistic abuse. A therapist can provide a safe and supportive environment to explore the emotional impact of the relationship, develop coping strategies, 
and work on rebuilding self-esteem and self-worth. In addition, support groups can be helpful for individuals who feel isolated and alone in their experiences. Support groups provide a space for individuals to connect with others who have had similar experiences, share stories and advice, and provide validation and support. A study published in the journal Psychotherapy found that individuals who participated in group therapy for narcissistic abuse experienced a significant reduction in symptoms of anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The study also found that group therapy provided a safe and supportive environment for individuals to process their experiences and develop coping strategies. Overall, seeking support from a therapist, support group, or both can be an essential step in healing from the emotional trauma caused by a relationship with a narcissist. It is essential to recognize that not all narcissists are capable of change. Indeed, it does seem from the data that most narcissists are not capable of change. Many may resist efforts to help them see the impact of their behavior on others. It is also unlikely that there is anything you can say to a true narcissist that will get them to fully understand the impact of their behavior and the need to change. It is important to remember that you cannot control another person's behavior or emotions. However, you can take steps to prioritize your own well-being and seek out resources and support to help you cope with the impact of narcissistic behavior. How to deal with the lack of closure. Dealing with a lack of closure from a narcissistic relationship can be challenging and emotionally taxing, not only on you, but also for your next partner. The silent treatment can make it even more difficult to move on, as it can leave the victim feeling confused and uncertain about what went wrong. Here are some ways to deal with the lack of closure and rationalize the situation. 1. Accept the reality. It is important to accept that the relationship is over, and the narcissist is unlikely to provide closure. Narcissists are often unwilling to provide closure or discuss their feelings, so it is unrealistic to expect closure from them. Even if the narcissist is willing to meet with you and a therapist to clear the air, that is about further abuse and control, and they will simply attempt to hijack the session and make it all about them. Worst case, they will try to manipulate the therapist. Narcissists often lack empathy and are unable to understand or acknowledge the impact of their behavior on others. Accepting this reality can help in moving on and healing from the experience. 2. Seek support. Talking to a trusted friend, family member, or therapist can help in dealing with the emotional impact of the silent treatment and lack of closure. Again, support groups or online forums can also provide a safe space to share experiences and connect with others who have gone through similar situations. 2. Practice self-care. Engaging in self-care activities, such as exercise, meditation, or hobbies, can help in reducing stress and improving overall well-being. Taking care of oneself can also provide a sense of control and empowerment in a situation where the victim may feel helpless. Focus on your healing. 3. Set boundaries. If the narcissist attempts to contact you, it is important to set boundaries and maintain no contact. Responding to the narcissist's messages or attempts to contact may give them the impression that the victim is still interested, which can lead to further manipulation and emotional distress. Block them from social media. 4. Seek closure within oneself. While closure from the narcissist may not be possible, seeking closure within oneself can be empowering. This may involve reflecting on the relationship and identifying areas of growth or learning. Making this type of post, for example. It can also involve forgiving oneself for any mistakes made and accepting the situation for what it is. 5. Don't blame yourself. Remember that narcissistic behavior is not your fault, and you did not deserve to be treated poorly. 6. Practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself and recognize that healing from a narcissistic relationship takes time. It is important to keep in mind that dealing with the aftermath of a narcissistic relationship can be a complex and ongoing process. Seeking support and practicing self-care can help in managing the emotional impact and moving towards healing and recovery and a stronger, successful relationship with a new partner.